Yes, indeedy. Yes, indeedy. What's up, everybody? Welcome to the 12th episode of Live with Light Skin Lou. And today <laughs> I have a very, very special guest. But before I introduce him, man, let me give you guys, let me give special thanks to TMT's own Derek DC Curry for dropping in and dropping them jewels on us last week. Thanks, big fella. Thanks a lot. And also, I would like to thank you guys for your continued support of Live with Light Skin Lou. So hit that like button. And if you're new to the channel, hit that subscribe button. Now, let me introduce my next guest. This guy is a seventh time world champion, one of the finest fighters to come out of the DMV area. He fought the likes of Mayweather, Zab Judah, Kodo. And he's also, as you can see, he's a chef, entrepreneur, and my Pond Street partner for life. He is none <laughs> other than Demarcus Chop Chop Corley. <laughs> What's up, Chop? How you feeling, champ? Man, every day is a hard day, but you just got to fight through it, man. Everybody talking about this mental health thing now. <laughs> hey, it, it, it's going around, man. It seems to be going around. It seems like a lot of people are coming out with it, man. But that's one thing that uh, we're going to talk about a little later on in the topic, man. But I want to start with you, Chop, because, you know, we grew up together. I've known you for a long time, man. So I just wanted you to let everybody know what was it like growing up in Kenilworth and what made you put those boxing gloves on? Oh, man, it was amazing growing up. <laughs> it's funny I'm going to say this. It was amazing growing up in the project. Um, I learned how to do a lot of things being a kid, learning how to fight, playing in the creek, going home <laughs> dirty, um, going to school with other kids and just having fun. My thing was climbing trees. I love climbing trees. So um, that was one of my ways of getting away from everybody who couldn't climb a tree. I'd go up there so they wouldn't come up there. But uh, just being around good good people as a kid growing up and then the adults back then parents other parents can whoop you you yes. can't do that yeah. now with these kids you say something to another parent child parent come out they don't be talking to my child like that well your son is doing wrong at the end of the day i correct them do they correct them no that's right and that's how it, man nowadays like you said it's, it's it's frowned upon and that was something that you know growing up on pond street man if we did something wrong that was you, you was getting dealt with, whether it was another parent or, a, you know, just an older person that knew your parents. Exactly. So what, what made you put those boxing gloves on, man? Let everybody know what made you put those <laughs> gloves on. I know how you did, but let everybody out there know, man. I got into boxing because, I mean, basketball, I'm not a team player when it comes to basketball, football. I could do volleyball because you get a chance to move around on the court and play different positions, but. Boxing is one-on-one, -on -one, man, and I'm a very competitive person. As a kid, I was growing up, I always wanted to play football, but I want to get the person that hit me. I don't want to hit someone else. So boxing is just you and your opponent at the end of the day, and that was a motivation to me. As you win or lose, you get a trophy. And just bringing home a trophy made me so proud of something that I was able to accomplish as a kid. So it was so it was the individual part that really got you. Yeah, one on one. Yeah. And that, that's that's something big, man, because boxing is something that I wanted to do coming up. You know, of course, I signed up with you 
And, uh, you know, we eventually end up moving. That's one thing I regret, man, because <laughs> it, it's funny how, I, you know, 85 is where we move. And then the next time I saw you, man, you were uh, you were on the amateur circuit, blowing it up, man. I was so proud of you. Um, and you, as you look back, what do you remember most about that? Oh, boxing, boxing saved my life. It kept me out of trouble. I mean, we all grew up and we seen the wrong things that was going on in the project, and we liked it what we saw. I ain't gonna lie. Yeah, we did. And, we did. <laughs> and then I, I remember the jump out, running around through the neighborhood, chasing my brother and them. And as I got older. I, I tried that stuff, and the jump outs used to chase me, and I run into the woods where I know they ain't gonna catch me if I get in the woods. So it just saved my life because if I would, didn't have boxing, man, I knew I would have got caught up with the wrong people, peer pressure, hanging out, hitting the clubs, the go go. I tried the go go scene at one time, but uh, when I got shot, man, in '97, it opened my eyes to life. Yes. And I, that's sad for a lot of young kids. It shouldn't take you getting shot for you to realize what you have in front of you. That's right. Because like you said, man, that could have ended your boxing career, man. Like you said, you were in 97. I think that probably was like your first or second year being pro, right? I, it was going on my second year. I just, yep. Yeah. I turned pro in 96. So when that happened to you, man, how hum how humbling was that? Um, it was an eye opener for me just to show me, look, is this what you want boxing? Well, you got to distance yourself from your friends and do things totally different in life. And that was hitting the club. Uh, I tried that smoking weed stuff also, but I knew what I wanted. So I wasn't going to let nothing stop me from what I wanted out of life. And that was to become a world champion. And that's something that you did, man. You made everybody proud, man. You know, when I finally got back in contact with you, you, you know, like I said, you was doing your thing. What do you remember uh, most about your first pro? I think it was May 17, 1996, man. Do you remember anything special about that day, man? Yeah, it was at my high school where I graduated <laughs> from A.C. <AC> Wilson. <laughs> and, and not only that, it was on my manager's birthday, Sugar Ray Leonard. Okay. So um, just being at the high school where you graduated from and your first pro fight, everybody who's seen you growing up through our high school, seeing you training every day, running around the track field, they were like, man, this dog really turned pro. He a pro mm -hmm. fight. He having his first pro fight at his high school. That was amazing for me, man. Yeah, I would imagine because it, it takes you back to be like, damn, this is where I started at. And for all the people, because, you know, once you start something sharp, people going to always hate on it or not see it the way you see it. And for you to see yourself through it and make it through, I'm pretty sure it was very rewarding, man. And not only that, to be at the high school in which you graduated, man, it, it don't get no better than that, man. I had some days at H.C. Wilson, boy. Yeah, oh, I want to repeat all the time. <laughs> <laughs> hey, look, I had eyes and ears up there. I, I, I heard stories about you, Chad. <laughs> <laughs> oh man so you you said boxing it changed your life and that's something that you know sports that's what it do for us what what did it change most about you how was boxing most helpful to chop giving me an opportunity to see the world growing up in the projects and your parents don't have that kind of money they work in a nine to five on section eight on welfare, and um, I knew my mother wouldn't have been able to send me out of town on a boxing trip. So they had the programs with the rec center that allowed us, if you win, the recreation center or the USA Boxing Committee would sponsor the trip for the fighters to go out of town. And that was just amazing just to get a chance to travel to Tennessee, Ohio, Miami. And my parents didn't have to pay for it because they wouldn't have been able to at the end of the day, so I wouldn't have been able to go. And that would made me stick with the sport even harder just to get a chance to go out of town and meet other fighters and then see the world. Yeah. Yeah, because you've seen the world, Chop. You didn't for As I was doing my research, I was like, man, you 85 fights in, man, 85, 86 fights in. 
you didn't been to Canada, man, you didn't been all over the place, man. What place that you fought in that that really stands out the most? You did when you went over there, you was like, wow, this 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 is something. I would say Russia when I fought in Kazakhstan. Um, the, the 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 city they had all Christmas lights, but it wasn't Christmas time. So at night. They light up the city. They light up everywhere. All the trees have Christmas lights. Um, the lampposts have Christmas lights on it. And they had just remodeled, so the road was new. Everything was just clean. They had women out there. They were brushing the streets, cleaning the streets at night. And um, it was just beautiful, man. The trees were just... It was like you had a Christmas parade, but it wasn't Christmas time. Wow. That's big, man. I'm glad that you was able to see that, man. As I was looking back, um, I'm going to fast forward a little bit. I looked at 2003, 2004, 2005. I don't know which order it was, but it was, I think it was Zab, Mayweather, and Cotto. Those three fights right there, man, um, that was a hell of a streak. And that's something that's not being done these, these days, Chop, where you got a guy like yourself, a highly decorated amateur, came out of the pros, steam. <laughs> And the fact that you were, you know, fighting these fighters back to back like that. Do you ever think that, that it will ever come a time where this is consistently done? No, because boxing has changed over the years with the promoters and the managers. They um they doing it different with the fighters. They giving them a different path to take. And that path is the easy path. Not getting the exposure that they really should get, not getting the fights that they really need to see where they at. Yeah, I, and I, I look back sometimes when I look at the fighters like you, Daryl Coley, Sean Bay Mitch, I look at the roads that you guys had to travel, which is a lot different. I had Daryl Coley, former two-time champ, Daryl Coley, on the show two weeks ago, and I asked him, Chop, I said, who's your favorite three DMV fighters? Guess what? <laughs> your name was in that list. So when you hear somebody like Daryl Too Sweet Coley, man, shout you out like that, how, how does that feel, man? It make me feel good because he was one of my idols because when Daryl came to fight, the city came out because they knew Too Sweet was going to put on a show. He was going to have on a fly outfit, and, and he's going he's gonna to have some bad girls in the stands, and all the hustlers, they all come in suited and booted and looking good, man, because it was Daryl Cole. It was Too Sweet time, man. Yes, it was. Yes, it was, man. And you, you went bad yourself, Chop. Those outfits, did you? I used to like. I remember. I used to watch your fight. Just to watch, I man. Watch you fight, of course. But the main thing is getting there early so we can see what outfit that you were going to uh, come. So answer this, man. What went into your mindset when you when you put your outfit together? What, what was your mindset? Every time I I got one that. I ain't put out there yet, but it's, it's, it's a bad one, dude. <laughs> um, it's showtime, man. It's time to perform. We are fighters at the end of the day, but you're performing for that audience, that crowd. And you got to leave a statement when you come out that tunnel, that locker room. The first thing they're going to see is what you're wearing. And when the night is over, they remember you won or lost. But that joke had that outfit on. That shit was fly. Yes. His shoes, his skirt, his jacket. Man, I saw it was suited and booted. Man, if you out there, man, you just getting in here, man. We in here chopping it up with my main man, the Marcus <laughs> Chop Chop Corley in the building, seven-time former world champion. Man, you don't get no better than this, man. As you guys can see, this man got a chef outfit on. He cooking. We doing an interview, man. We, we chopping it up and we cooking. So let me ask you this, Chop. How did you, what, Chop Chop Kitchen. Tell everybody out there about Chop Chop Kitchen, man. What, what should they expect when you open the kitchen up, man? What, what should they expect? <laughs> what should they expect? Soul food. I love, I love to eat. I got the name Chop Chop at 10 years old, and we're going way back to 1986. Wow. I was 10 years old and um, made it to the Silver Gloves National. Okay. And, um. Uh, it was in Nashville, Tennessee, and we had drove down. And uh, we got there. It was on a Friday night. We were hungry, so the fighter was hungry. The coach was like, we're going to feed y'all, but first, you got to check your weight. 
Okay, so we all checking our weight and everything. I'm saying I'm fighting at 65 pounds. Coach Kenny Mallard at, at that time was my coach. Okay. Said, all right. Okay. Yeah, all right, all right, Demarcus. That was my name, Demarcus. All right. You 65, you right on point. You right at the weight limit. We're going out to eat. Now, you know when you go out to eat, you're not supposed to have no soda. Stay away from the french fries. Most likely, you right. You need to be right there. So I supposed to have a salad. And I ain't enough to get the place we went. We went to, uh, I think it was Wendy's, where they had the salad bar mm -hmm. in the middle. So other fighters, they was eating burgers. So I had a salad in front of me, but I ate some of the salad. Then I started eating other fighters' food. Man, before I knew it, I was back up there in line. I ordered me a sandwich, french fries. I had a Sunday. <laughs> <laughs> I went from 65 pounds to 75 pounds within some hours because the next morning I got on the scale, I was 75 pounds. Damn. My coach Kenny said, you chop that food up. I'm going to call you Chop Chop for now. On. And ever since then, that was the name, Chop Chop. <laughs> Man, that's a hell of a name, man. I like when you say chop chop, you, you can think of so many things, man. But I'm pretty sure you'll find a way to make a you person. Hear me, understand. I can't hear you. Can you hear me? You can't. Hold on, let me check. Hold on. I can't on. hear you. Kiki, can you hear me? I hear you. Mm, why did you do that? Maybe when he went out for a minute. Maybe when you went out for a minute. Hold on just a second. Can you hear Can me now? You? I'm gonna go out and come back in. Okay. Yeah, hold on just a second, y'all. Chop, chop. He didn't. He probably didn't burn the kitchen up. <laughs> That's the reception. That if you back in just a second, we're gonna pull him back in. <laughs> My man, chop, man. This man got a, a, a chef outfit over there doing the interview. You you can't make this up, man. Oh, no. You can't make it up, man. <laughs> Yeah, you remember when it, it messed up a little bit? Yeah, it went okay. black on his end? Yeah, it yeah. might have messed up something. Maybe something Maybe. with his earpiece. I'm not sure. Yeah, ladies and gentlemen, if y'all just getting in here, we're having a little technical difficulties, but we ain't here with seven-time world champion Chop Chop Demarcus Corley in the building. He in the kitchen cooking up something big. Uh, here we go. You got it. Yep. Can you, can you hear me now? Yep. Oh, we back in business. I was just telling people you burnt the kitchen up, man. So you got to go to another location. <laughs> <laughs> oh man, my man Derek Curry in the building. What's up, big fella? But yeah, chop. We gonna. I, I I seen something that you posted right before we came on. Hard yeah, to get man. a fight at one thirty five, one forty. I ain't gonna say no more. You explain that to the people out there. Oh. Um. Me as a veteran, man, I've been around the block a couple of decades now, two decades. So okay. I'm a dangerous fighter at the end of the day. I'm not coming in there to lay down. And the promoters and the managers know if you fight and chop, you got a motherfucking fight on your hands. It ain't going to be an easy fight. And they don't want to put these young fighters, which I ain't got no problem with the young fighters, but you got fighters that are fighting at 135 in the top 20. Give me a fight. Still fight me. I'm not done yet. Do you think they look at your age and say, okay, what do I have to gain from this versus losing? Do you think it's they think of it that way? It's a lot. It's a, it's a risk, but the reward is not big enough for the fighters. Okay. If, if they go to distance, we fighting eight to 10 rounds. If they go to distance and they don't stop chop, oh, you for the old guy. You should have stopped them. Then you fight me, and I clip you. Man, you shouldn't have put him in there with that fighter, man. <laughs> Chop dangerous. You, you, you see his social media, the man, all he do is eat, sleep, boxing. Every yes. day, he in the gym. But a lot of people don't understand that, though, Chop. They just look at your age. They don't look at the fact that you don't do what the average 48-year-old do. You constantly stay at it. And that's why I take my hat off to you, man, because we the same age. I'm like two months old, two months apart. And it's certain stuff that I'm like, I be seeing you do. I'm like, I can't do that. So, <laughs> <laughs> so I take my hat off to you, man. I'm going to ask you this, though, y'all. 
okay, I'm a promoter, right? And uh -huh. I come to you and I say, look, chop, three fights that you want to finish out well, whether it's three fights, four fights, five fights. Give me three fights that you want to do right now. Right now. You asked me that right, question. Right now. I'm putting you on the spot, dog. <laughs> right here, right now. One, I would like, I would like a shot at Tank. Okay. Why? Because he's he's the gorilla on the block. And he's a softball. I remember you saying that last time I interviewed you. I remember you saying that. Um, number two. I will go up to 140 and fight whichever champion there, whoever at 140. Let me see, 140. We got uh what's the guy named over over um overseas? Um Josh Taylor, I think. Josh Taylor. I think so. Yeah, Josh Taylor. I, I like I said, I would like to see that fight, man. I, I just want to see, I want to see you finish off, you know, in style, child. Because I told you, man, when your last fight, one of these last fights, I want to come out with you, champ. You know what I'm saying? And I'm trying to get on that October the first <laughs> card, man. Right. So I was I was excited, man, because I had two guys that I watch come through the box, dedicate their life to boxing. I was going to be able to watch them both fight on the same card. You and my younger brother, Anthony. And when that fight fell apart, man, it broke my heart. Remember, we talked via text, yeah, man. Yeah. And I, I was I was I was hurt because I want to see it through, man. So yeah, I'm waiting to talk to Dusty and them um, hopefully on Monday or Tuesday, him and Thomas. Because they want me, they got another young. I have nothing against the young fighter, but the young fighter named Mac Allison out of Baltimore, Maryland. They say he accept to fight me. I'm I'm gonna get I'm gonna get shit thrown at me when I fuck this kid up. They gonna say, Wait. "Chop, why you do that to that young man?" He accept to fight me. They shouldn't want to fight me. Don't let the forty eight fuck with you like that. I'm Lucius. <laughs> I'm better. I'm better at. I'm better now than I was when I was in my fucking 25, 26 year old. So, do you think that's off experience, or you just peak? You peaking like that fine wine? It's like fine wine, and working with these younger fighters, they keeping me on point. Okay. Yeah, because I see you in there all the time, and every time I look up, you have a younger fighter with you, and that, and that's one way of staying youthful. You know what I'm saying? Knowing that. If you're going to get a fight, it's going to be a younger fighter. Because no, I don't think an older fighter is going to get in the ring with you. Because I, I just, I just don't see that happening. So if you fight, it's going to be a younger guy. Yep. So my next question is uh, the charity event. I think it was put the guns down and throw your hands up. What was that like? Uh, I did two of them. I did one. The first one was in uh, L.A. It was with uh, Harriet Tubman. Okay. That was a charity event for her, uh, her legacy, and they did it, reveal the statue. That was with Devin Alexander. Devin is a much bigger guy now. He's 100 and probably 55 to 60 pounds. But it felt good to move around with Devin for that event. It, I had fun. And then when I got the news to fight another exhibition, and this one will be back on the East Coast in the DMV, I said, yeah, I'll do it. And I said, I have a lot of boxing equipment so I can donate my gloves to the gyms and stuff back on the East Coast. I said, but uh, I'm going to make a statement. They were like, what you mean? I was like, I got an outfit that I haven't even worn yet. And they say two rounds. My shoes had two rounds on it. My skirt had two rounds on it. And my jacket, I didn't even bring the jacket, but I knew I was only going to do two rounds. Damn. I take nothing against Larry, but my Larry game Johnson, plan, right? Yeah, my yeah. game plan was to do two rounds and get out of there. Yeah, and I, I seen some footage, man. Hey, Chop, you still able to move, man? Like, I just be amazed by that. What's the uh, key to your longevity, man? Without telling all your secrets, man. What, what's the key to your longevity, uh, man? Leave that alcohol. Don't drink. Leave that liquor alone. I seen my. No, oh, there go again. Uh oh, we hit a glitch. Can you hear me? Oh, there you go. Yeah, I got you. Yeah, I got you. Nah, it went out again. Some a phone call came in. Okay. Uh, I'm gonna go out and come back. Okay. 
Yeah, Chop gonna go back out and come back in, y'all. Yeah, he, yeah, the, the fact I think that he, when somebody calls him, it messes it up. And that's the problem, I guess. Yeah, I think that's a, a ongoing thing right there. <laughs> but yeah, we getting we getting the champ back up in here, y'all. He coming right back. And we got a couple of questions in the chat now. Okay. Yeah, and when we get back, we're gonna we're gonna um change it up a little bit and get those questions in there. Yeah, there we go. Yeah, there we go. We back, we back. <laughs> Um, I, I I thank God because <laughs> growing up and hitting the clubs and being around older guys and your friends, the peer pressure. We go to the club and they go to the bar. I try I tried drinking. I tasted it. I had some gin before. I had some Belvedere. <laughs> I um I tried Ciroc. That shit is nasty. <laughs> you ain't lying, man. Man. I mean, Especially if it's not something that you that you that you do. And when I when I had some gin and juice, and back then my mom used to drink gin. They used to have Seegers gin. That's that cheap gin. That shit. Yeah, that's that strong Man. shit right there. So I had some gin at the club. I had some gin and juice, gin and some orange juice. Man, it burned going down my throat. I'm like, man, this shit tastes nasty. And I'm looking at other people's drinking like 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 it's soda. I'm I'm sipping it. They just ooh, ooh, ooh. I'm like, damn. They don't burn. They're like, nah, I'm I'm good. I'm like, okay, I don't want no more. Yeah, so, man, that's something that if you stay away from that, it definitely definitely would do you some good, man. But chop, we about to change it up, man. We got go. two questions in the chat, man. We about to go over to the chat room. Kiki, what you got over there in the chat room? Okay, we got a couple of more in now. Okay, <laughs> that's right. Hit them up. Okay, so let's see. So the first one comes from Jamar Hill, chop. He said, "Who are your top five boxers of all time?" Uh, I would go with Sugar Ray Robinson first. <laughs> okay. Pernell Whitaker. Okay. Marvin Hagler. Okay. Muhammad Ali. Okay. And um, last one, got to be Mike Tyson. Okay. I can't be mad at that. Great question, Jamar Hill. That's my man. Wheels of steel. <laughs> <laughs> okay. The next one is from Tony Stewart. He said, would you fight Floyd again in an exhibition? <laughs> he don't want that smoke. <laughs> Plain and simple. He's a big, he's much bigger than me. He's about 155 pounds right now. He still don't want to fuck with me. And why do you think he don't want to fuck with you, uh, Chop? I'm dropping that hot shit. I'm still punching. <laughs> He know I'm going to do an exhibition with you. He will make me sign a waiver. Look, you can't hit me hard. You can't go try to knock me out with that right hook. Look, put the gloves on. We can go in the gym and spa and film it. I will fuck him up again. When I catch him, he'll see. <laughs> Chop said he's still growing that smoke. Great questions. My man Spoon in the building. What's up, champ? Okay. Uh, next is Mel. So Mel has a couple of questions. The first question is, how often do you get back to visit D.C.? Pretty often. I was just there uh, a few weeks ago. And then my daughter graduated in June. I was there for a graduation. I, I miss the city. I miss playing horseshoes with my old horseshoe buddies. Yeah. Man. Okay, let's see. Next one is, Mel said, who's your football, who's your football team? I like the Redskins, but I'm a I'm a, a Patriots fan, man. Whatever team throw the football, most likely. And the New England Patriots was throwing the ball a couple of years ago, and they were scoring touchdowns. <laughs> <laughs> That's right. Uh, okay, let's see. Okay, this is last one. He said, "Do you think you could ha could have finished Floyd off when you had him hurt?" Yeah, but my condition wasn't there. He was okay. a he was a younger smaller fighter and he knew and his uncle told him if you watch the fourth round after I heard him in the fifth round he was coming out his uncle said box that motherfucker don't bang with him box him and Floyd came out there and started boxing yeah and that's one thing about Floyd man like you think about when Shane caught him and yeah. Zab caught him he knows how to adapt 
He's you when you catch him with one punch, you ain't gonna never catch him with that punch again. If you not, do not, it, again, not yeah, in that same position, yeah, but you ain't gonna catch him with that same one. Okay, the next one is from Ron Williams, Bump City. He said, Chop, who was your toughest opponent? I'm gonna go with Lucas Matisse. <laughs> 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 hey, 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 Lou, and I la I laugh and you laugh because Lamont fought Lucas also. Yes. Yes, man, he's bringing that thunder. Man, Lucas was just so much bigger than me and so much stronger. Man, he would knock me down. I kept getting up. But he was just overwhelming me, man, with just punches and punches. Yeah. I remember that fight. I was like, damn. I said, this dude like a machine, man. Yep. Bump City. That's my man, Bump City. All right, Chop. Um, this is from Derek Curry. <laughs> He said, let me broker that deal, Chop. <laughs> That's right, Dirk. I want to be front row for this one. Nah, tell, tell Dirk. Get, get that, tell A.B. to finish up his mental health thing. Get himself together. I want A.B. <laughs> I would, hey, man, I would die to see that fight, man. These are fights that, if they happen, man, it will be a bomb burner, man. People look at your age, Chop, and they don't even understand, like, dude, I still can boogie out there. And I, I got a chance to work with Adrian in camp before, so it's unfinished business right there. He he was he was nice when we sparred, man. Short as, we sparred twice, matter of fact. We sparred over headbangers before. So what, what was that like when this is A.B. in his prime? What, what stood out to you the most when you sparred him? He was like another Floyd Mayweather when I was in there working with him. He was okay. letting his hands go. He was very hard to hit, but over the years, fighters change. So what, what do you think that he, because like you say, he, he used to let his hands go, but all of a sudden he would get in fights and wouldn't let his hands go. And he, he lost a couple of fights because he wasn't busy enough. So what, what do you think happened? I think it's the wear and tear on his body, the stuff that he was putting in his body throughout outside of training camp, he didn't have the right people around him to tell him, man, you ain't got to be doing this, man. This ain't you. Your profession is boxing. Why are you all here drinking, turning up? Yeah, and then those his, yeah, those are his prime years. And, uh, you know, when we first started, we, you mentioned something about mental health, and I, that's something that I touched on last week with, uh, with Derek Curry, last week's guest. Uh, what are your thoughts on that? Just, you got Garcia, uh, Garcia and then you had uh, Adrian Broner, who just canceled the fight because of that. What, what are your thoughts on that? Um, it's very serious, but um, we deal with mental health every day, Lucius, in life. Fighters are just coming out with it. But I've been dealing with this shit for several years now. I'm still dealing with it. My brother was murdered by a guy who used to box, who grew up with me in Kenilworth, Stanley Holmes. I'm still dealing with that shit. My mother leaving me, I'm still dealing with her death. Being separated from my kids, going through a divorce with my wife, I deal with mental health every fucking day. But I don't give up. Yeah, that's serious, man. Mental health is it's very serious. And sometimes people don't have the mental makeup to navigate. Uh, because you got to think boxing, you need your mental every day. Boxing is 90% mental. So for me, my stance on it is just, just get the help. Just get the proper help and come back swinging. I would love to see Aiden Broner come back and, you know, get back and, and finish strong. I don't, I don't think he would ever be the fighter he was, but I just want to see him finish strong. Yeah, I don't think he'll ever be the same again, neither. But uh, I do want to shout. <laughs> <laughs> hey, I got you, Chop. I got you. You got to finish strong, man. Like I said, you, you get these last three or four fights. And uh, oh, how many of the fights you feel like you could do? I know you like 90, 90 is good to talk about at 90 is good. That was my next question, Chop. Do you think you would get to 90 fights? It's, it's very hard, man, because they're trying to force me out, man. It's like they put me in exile. I, I post a fight October the 1st on that card in DC. They haven't sent me no contract yet, they haven't agreed upon the opponent, which is Mac Allison. Um, I posted a fight October the 29th in Tennessee also. They ain't got no opponent for their fight. So it's like 
Which one we're going to do? Whichever one come to the table, I'm going to fight. Can't get no fight in September when I'm trying to reach out to other man, chop, man. They don't want to fight you, man. And that's crazy because I'm, I'm trying to get into your heads, like with you and Anthony. Y'all had a fight coming up August the 6th, past tense, and it was canceled. So as a fighter, what what's that like, man? The fight just got canceled. You just found out. What's going on through your mind? You're frustrated. And then you got to be able to have a strong mind and say, look, okay, this is just a setback. I'm going to still go to the gym. I'm still going to go run it. I'm still going to continue to put this work in, even though the fight is off now. And me, Lou, I took a fight on a five-day notice. I remember. And I, and I became world champion. But that was my motivation right there. When I took that fight back in, 19, back in 2001 on a five-day notice, and he had almost beat Sean Bay Mitchell for the WBA title. Wow. They was like, Chop, <clears throat> we need you to fill in. I'm like, okay. It's for a world title. It's your first TV fight. I said, okay. They said, you ready? I said, I'm ready. You fighting the guy that Sean Bay? I said, I watched that fight. He almost beat Sean Bay. What was the guy's Sean name? Bay. Huh? What was the guy's name? Felix Flores. That's Tito Trinidad's nephew. Okay. So he had Tito in his corner and his grandfather, Papa Trinidad. They were like, Chop, you know how he fight. He coming. I'm like, I'm ready. I took the fight on the five-day notice. Two minutes and 49 seconds. Fight was over first round. Wow. And after that, I knew right then and there, my job was to stay ready so I ain't got to get ready. Get ready, yes. Yeah, and you do that, man. Like, if you watch your timeline... You stay, you stay getting on the scale, keeping people abrupt, letting them know, like, look, when I get on the scale, I'm going to be 140 or under. And that's a good way to look at it, man, because like you say, you'll stay ready, so you ain't got to get ready. Yeah, and then uh, I reached out to um, PBC and them when Adrian Bruno pulled out that Omar Figueroa fight. I was at 140 pounds. I was available. But network, they already had somebody in Tonight. play that, a stand back. Yeah. That's right. That's how it works, man. But ladies and gentlemen, if y'all just getting in here, start off by showing Chop some love. Hit that like button. And if you're new to the channel, hit that subscribe button. My man Chop, stay busy. Always in the kitchen. The outfit, man, I can't get over the outfit, Chop. Hey, look, <laughs> ever since I know you, you've you, you been that daredevil, man. And that's going <laughs> to that's gonna lead me to my next question. Um, bare, knuckle, bare, bare knuckle fighting. When I saw it, I thought it was maybe like somebody playing around. But then I was like, that's just like this dude. You was always the dude when we was jumping the creek back in the day. You always wanted to jump further and jump in a different direction. So I'm not surprised, man. But what was that bare knuckle fighting like? What was it like? It was amazing, man. It felt like I was back at home in Kenilworth in the streets. And everybody was just crowded around on Pond Street. We on Pond Street. Everybody out there, mm -hmm. come on, duck. Come on, duck. Let's go. And then who I'm fighting? Let's say we fighting a uh, pistol. Come on, pistol. Y'all rooting for pistol. And we just fighting. And that's what it felt like. A, a street fight. But when he slammed me, I just couldn't breathe after I did the next round. And it took a lot out of me. And a lot of people don't know, I have asthma. So when he slammed me and I landed on my back, it knocked the wind out of me. So I had to take a deep breath. And I'm like, I'm trying. I got to continue. But leading up to the fifth round, I started having problems breathing. I was having an asthma attack. But I was winning the fight. And they were wow. like, you're winning. I'm like, I don't give a fuck if I'm winning. I can't breathe. Can't breathe. Yeah, exactly. I said, look, I'm done. This is fight is over. And I, I, told, I told him, look, man, it's done. The ref, like, you you going to fight? I'm like, no, it's done. I can't breathe. And they should have disqualified him or even called the fight in no contest. Wow. Yeah, I remember Ooh. that fight. I was like, damn. I was like, he went out there and put the bare knuckles on. That's something I probably I, I could never do that. Hey, Lou, I'll do it again. 
I already know. I already know. <laughs> hey, come on, child. I already know how you roll, man. I already I love know. To fight, man. I ain't gonna lie. I love to fight. So let me ask you this: Out of all the younger fighters out here now, do you see any of these fighters that reminds you of yourself, mm. or do anything like you, your style, your charisma, anything? And that's willing to fight anybody. Oh, um, um, the young, the young, and um, yeah, he he very flamboyant. He got a good style with him. Um, love, love. Uh, what's his name? I think he out of Philly. Mike of uh, Showtime. What's his name? Too pretty, too pretty. Love something. I can't. Let me see. Philly, you talking about cool boy? No, nah, his name. It's too pretty. I think it's Mike Too Pretty Love. Montana. Okay. Montana. Okay. Montana Love. Montana Love. Okay. What what does he do to chop? Reminds of reminds himself of. Uh he he likes to sit in the pocket and he has a tunnel vision. And that's something a lot of young fighters they don't know how to gravitate to and get that tunnel vision. Mike sets in the pocket and he look for shots and look for openings, steady. Boxing and moving all the time. Mm -hmm. So I, I definitely can see that, man. You sound like you froze up a little bit. You good? Yeah, I'm good. Oh, okay. Yeah, I thought you froze up a little bit. You've been going for a long time, child. 1996, May 17th. How many more fights? I know I asked before, but I, I just I'm 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 push the I want to push the wallet, man, and go to 90. I want to get them four more in there, man. I'm at 86. Give me four more. They trying to force me out, man. They ain't trying to give me a fight. I'm trying to get, if I can get me two fights in this year, I'll be good. And then two in next year, I'm set. I don't plan on losing. That's the most important thing. Because once you lose, everybody going to say, uh, he done, he done. Yeah, he need to retire. And yeah, they're trying to they put you out. So, that's a question I almost forgot to ask you, man. It's a fight that's on the cusp right now, and you already know where I'm going with it. Earl Spence and, and Terrence Crawford. Who wins and why? Both Southpaws. Mm -hmm. I think Bud had better boxing skills than Earl. Okay. Because he coming from a right-handed style fight. And then he switched to softball. He can make the adjustments very easily. <clears throat> and he's not always trying to knock all his opponents out. Earl, he's coming. He's coming at you, yeah. He, he want to clip you. That's why he always say, man down. He trying to put his man down. I think Bud can win the rounds and win on points. And it can be a 7-5 type of decision. But if Earl keep that pressure, he going to catch Bud. He may drop him, and that's going to be the downside of the fight. So you see you see as the decision. You don't see a, a, a knockout. No, I don't see a knockout because once he hurt turns, turns going to get on his bicycle and start boxing. And um, he going to try to make up for the knockdown. But that's going to be the decision of the fight. Yeah, I, I got a 50 55-45, and uh, it's, it's before Errol Spence had the uh, car accident, I kind of had him favored. Oh. But after the accident, I didn't know Chop if he was going to recover because you 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 can test it. It's like you got shot, and you know all of the stuff that you gotta you gotta get yourself back up to health before you can even get in the ring and worry about strategy and just being a boxer again. So that's where I was at with it. But after his fight with Usyk, not Usyk, um, what's the guy's name? It's, Having the brain freeze. His last opponent. Yeah, before Lucy. Yeah, yeah. He 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 showed that uh he he he's back. And I think that's what made the public say, look, this fight has got to happen because Terrence Crawford, he knocked out uh Sean Porter, which has never been done. Mm -hmm. So now that you got those two things now that the fight, everybody wanna see it. So it's it's a it's a it's a fifty fifty fight for me. Yeah. It's a 49, 51. 
<laughs> yeah, I said that last time, but now I just, I just made it even, man. I just made yeah. it even. Another fight. It's not signed yet. Tank versus Garcia. Would you like to see that fight? And do you think Tank would uh take him out? I got a chance to um, meet Garcia face to face. He's a very tall, tall, tall young fighter. Mm-hmm. But that's not a problem for Tank. Tank know how to chop shit down. I mean, yeah. he can use my name if he wants to. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, Mario Bios, man. He um he chopped him down, and that was at one forty. Yeah, um, he moved up. It it'll be the adjustments Tank gonna have to make the first five rounds, and um, after that five rounds, six, seven, eight, he'll get it over. He he'll, he'll get um Ryan out of there. It'll be a knockout. I won't go decision. Yeah, I, I feel the same way too. I'm not a hater, but I just feel like uh, Garcia don't have enough. He has a left hook he could put you down with, but see, people don't give Tank credit for his boxing skills, uh, Chop. Yeah. They just look at him because when you when you hit hard, people tend to think that, oh, he just hit hard. They don't understand how Tank set Roley up. Yeah, Roley was getting some shots off, but that was the yeah. setup. Hey, it was the setup. And then Tank also, he's a softball, so most softball fighters that you study, look at, go back in history, we move our fucking head for some reason. Mm-hmm. And that's you gotta move your head. You have to. And you're gonna be that target because you're coming from the other side, man. Exactly. You're gonna be that target. Your side is the, usually the, the, the person's right hand side. So yeah. you, you gotta be on that swivel, man. So when you when you saw Tank fight Roley, the build up of that fight, did you did you give Roley a chance? A fighting I, chance. I get I get him. So I said the first couple of rounds, he's gonna be all right until Tank make the adjustments. And I tried to get in camp with Roley for that fight. Okay. But they didn't want that smoke. I just I think they scared that you're gonna be able to expose some things on a younger fighter, which to me, I feel like it's good because why you should have it exposed now versus in a in a real fight when you get into a championship fight. Why not expose it now? But you gotta look at also it's a possibility. Oh, I worked with this guy in camp. Now this guy trying to give me, he want to fight me. I mean, I worked with Danny Garcia for the Zab Judah fight. I cracked his ribs and had them to cancel the fight for a month. Wow. See, that's why I like chopping it up with Chop, man. You get all the behind the scenes stuff, man. Chop don't I hold no punches, punches, man. That's right. I ain't, I ain't mad at you. I ain't mad at you. That's one thing I respect about you. You always get the truth and straight up, man. I, a lot of people don't know about that. They're like, man, the Zab Judah and Danny Garcia fight is being postponed. Why? Chop cracked Danny Garcia ribs in camp. That's why. Wow. <laughs> so what fight do you want to run back? Uh, you, you didn't fought the best, man. I named your resume at the beginning. Kodo, Mayweather, Zab. What fight right now? If you had a chance to redeem yourself, it could be multiple fights. Which ones would it be? If 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 God would let it happen, he's not able to fight no more. I would like to fight Zach. That would be oh. number one. <laughs> N- number two, I'll make both of them, they got to lose weight. I want Cotto and I want Mayweather. <laughs> them three fights right there, that'll be it. Hey, look, it's funny you say that, man, because... I have those three names written. I said, I, I said I'm going to test myself. I said, I'm going to ask him this question, and I'm going to kind of understand where he's going. Those are the three names I got right here on my list, man, because I watched all of those fights, and I felt like you you know, you know, really showed yourself. Because on, that's on unfinished stage. business. Right yeah. yeah. Zab is unfinished business, and it's personal because what happened in Philly before the fight. I know. I mean, we last time I had you on, uh, I interviewed you on another platform. We talked about that, man. I, I, I would have never guessed that, man. But like you say, it's in the past, and I don't think that fight will happen because they're not living the life that you're living right now. It would take, yeah. it would take probably a year for them to catch up with you when you talk about uh, repetition of boxing. It, it, it would take some time. Yeah. yeah. So, man, any last words for the people out there, man, that you want to 
You want to shout anybody out? Or you, you got the floor, Chop. The call came in again. Hold on. All right. I'm, I'm waiting on you. I'm I'm wait on you. I wait on you. Okay. Yeah, Chop must be a busy man, huh? <laughs> I know, right? <laughs> he got like 50 phone calls. And I think since he messed up the first time, he think he got to keep going out, but he don't have to keep going out and coming back in. We can still win. <laughs> but hey, look, we're going we're gonna to do it the chant way today. <laughs> but no, nah, it's truly an honor to have Chop, man, because he's always spitting facts. Mm. And uh, he's, a, he's a real genuine guy, man. He's always uh, been straight up with me since I've known him. And he dropped those Jews on you. Those, that, that backstage stuff that everybody want to know. Gonna, he going to speak the truth no matter what. Yes, exactly. So, said, yeah, we going to. Ribs, that's why. <laughs> <laughs> you can't look. You can't make this up. <laughs> you cannot make this up. So, yeah, we waiting for the champ to come back in, y'all. We about to close the show. Um, Like I said before. You, hey, there we go. There you go. Yeah, yeah, chop chop back in the building. We about to get chop the floor. He probably got like 50 million people to thank, but <laughs> hey, let's do it. Uh, I want to thank you all, man. Thank y'all for giving me the opportunity, man, to chop it up with y'all. And y'all got a chance to see me in the kitchen. <laughs> That's right, man. That's right. Um, I'm working on a lot of things. We're working on Chop Chop Kitchen. We're gonna have a YouTube channel coming out soon. Um my vision, my plans is to come out with my own cookware, chop chop cookware, pots and pans, my own knife set, because I'm always cutting it up. Um, I'm going to start getting back in the gym, working with these other fighters, man, and pushing their goals to becoming world champion. That's Eventually, it, you'll hear about chop chop promotion line dropping. I'm going to get into promoting fights and everything. Yeah, that's one thing I didn't get a chance to ask you. Would it ever be a time where you be a coach? Yes. Okay. Yes. Okay. Yeah, I can see that, child, because I follow you, man, and I, you know I watch you with the younger kids. When you watch a former fighter, and you see them with young kids, you already you can see the energy. Like that's something that he loves to do because every fighter, every great fighter, don't have the mental and the patience to want to coach a coach a, a fighter. Yeah. Because you know you like. You want stuff done your way. Oh, yeah, your phone, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Let's tally you up one more time, champ. Look at that hot man, phone. Look at you on the right. You <laughs> set you on airplane mode, man. Ah. I'm, hey, man, I'm going to send Chop Chop a bill, man. He got me. <laughs> oh, goodness. Man, you can't make this up, man. Hey, I'm sorry, ladies and gentlemen. Champ. Champ phone blowing up, man. He got to keep going out. We're going to have to, hey, look, mm -hmm. we're going to have to find out how we can fix that old air because we, we can't keep going in and out, man. I done got a headache now. That's the first time it happened. But I, I, I guess we had a couple of guests on the show that phone. Yeah, was, uh, Patrick, but he didn't have to go back out and come back in. Yeah, we're going to have to find out how to um how to troubleshoot that. Yeah. Yeah. We waiting on the champ, y'all. <laughs> I wish I had that um that app with the Gerardo. What's that music? Do, 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 do. Uh, <laughs> Jamal did <they're> laughing. <laughs> I know he is. <laughs> hey, I told him I'm gonna send you a bill, man. We're gonna get that uh that elevator music. You can't hear. You can't hear me now. You on mute. Kiki, can you hear me? I hear you. Can you hear me, Chop? I don't hear him now. Yeah, you 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 doing something, Chop. <laughs> the people out there can hear me, man. Oh, oh my God. God. <laughs> I'm a killer dude, man. This <laughs> is, you can't make oh, this stuff. Oh, gosh. <laughs> I can't even get his man his flowers by his phone blowing up, man. When he come back, you guys just hurry up and do it. Yeah, I'm going to have to get chopped his flowers, man. Ladies and gentlemen, y'all just getting in here, man. I'm trying to get the champ his flowers, but he oh, keep getting phone calls and he got to keep going out. So bear with me, y'all. <laughs> <laughs> you cannot make this up. There we go. Back. We back. Man. There we go. You can't hear us? Oh, no. <laughs> well, I tell you what. 
Gary said, really "Come on, chop with that fish market, bro." <laughs> <laughs> Hey, Dirk. <laughs> Thank you for still tuning in, Dirk. You see what I got to deal with, man? This is what happens when you buy your cell phones hanging on the wall, man. Oh, God. Come on, Chop. Oh, my God, man. But you know, when you know your um, phone, <laughs> Spoon said he getting Uber Eat orders. <laughs> hey, Spoon, never in a thousand years, man. <laughs> Hey, Dirk, I got Herbert get his dude his flowers, uh, man, before his minutes run out, man. <laughs> oh, my God. Yeah, because you know when it rains, we still can be on. Because remember that happened to me before. I don't know what's wrong with it. <laughs> but it's, it's all good, man. That's the oh. champ. That's my homie. I love this dude, man. So I, I don't even, uh, this is just normal chop, man. I grew up with the dude, so I already know what to expect. Lisa's at the end. Yeah, we at the end. Because Lord knows that this would, be, <laughs> this would be something special, man. Oh, my God. There he is. Is he back? Okay. <laughs> Can you hear us? Oh, my God. The audio won't come back. No sound. Well, Can you hear me? No, he said no sound. Oh. He can't hear. We can hear him. But he can't hear us. Wow. Oh, let me see oh. something. Hold on just a second. Okay. Okay. Let me see. Can you hear me? No, I think I think it's your phone because over here it's showing everything, everything is up. Yeah, it, it shows that it's not muted. <laughs> Jamal said, Mr. Telephone. <laughs> Mr. Telephone, man, something wrong, wrong with my life. <laughs> oh, man. Oh, so yeah, we're going to get this one more shit. Calling them slap box <laughs> Hey, Spoon, you crazy, man. <sighs> but yeah, we're going to try one more time. If not, man, we're going to have to. um. I think I'm gonna have to right chop his uh his flowers, man. Yeah, because I I'm not sure what's going on. It's not muted. I hear him. Yeah, it's not, yeah. it's not muted. So we're gonna we're gonna get it for more shot. Because I think I wonder, he... did he go into his earpiece? Remember he had his earpiece on and he put it down. You yeah, know, I'm sometimes right. the earpiece is still connected. Yeah, you know what I'm talking up. about? Yeah, like he had his earpiece in it in his ear, and then he set it down. If you sometimes, if you don't put the earpiece back into the case, it'll still be on. That could be it. Maybe we're coming through his earpiece. Yeah, we're gonna try this one more time. He ain't come back yet. No, nah, he didn't. Yeah, I'm going to give him a few more seconds or not, but he's going to close the show. Okay. Ladies and gentlemen, please bear with us. We haven't, the, the champ is having some technical difficulties. We're trying to work it out so we can give this guy his flowers, another great interview. And we're just going to wait for the champ a few more minutes. But I want to appreciate all you guys for stopping through, putting the comments in, the questions on a weekly basis. I'm truly blessed. To have you guys to show up every week. And if we could just get Chop to come <laughs> in. <laughs> and, and look, as soon as we about to go to the comments, he's going to come in and watch. I'll tell you what, Kiki, you can kind of go down the list and just, you know, shout people out who, who, who chimed in. Oh, everybody that was in? Yeah, pretty. Yeah, go down the list and uh, get people their shots out. Okay. Shot. You had Abdullah. Um, Michael Peterson, you had What's up? Jamal Hill, Tiffany Pate, Bobby Wright, the second win boxing media, Tony Stewart, Big C, Derek Curry, Tyreek Irby, and let's see who else you had. Mel, Big Mel, Ron Williams. I think Bump City. Yeah, that's Bump City. 
and who else? Uh, KG44 Kwame. Is that Kwame? That's Kwame, my guy. Kwame in here. Um, Darius Douglas. Reese. Um, Mike H. And I think that's it. Oh, Terrence Mitchell. What's up, Terrence? How you feeling, champ? Thanks for chiming in. Yeah, we about to close this joint. I'm going to get Chop his flowers. He can see it on the rerun. Chop Chop, man, one of my favorite fighters in the DMV area, man. This guy fought everybody. He fought Mayweather, Kodo, Zab Judah, Matiste. He fought nothing but the best. No ducking in that man blood. And he was my Pond Street partner coming up in Kenilworth. So if you in here and you Kenilworth, you know how man Chop was when we came up. It was truly a blessing to have Chop Chop on the show. Um, as I always say, man, look, the best fight the best. And that's one thing that I always preach on the show. And Chop Chop did nothing but fight the best. So with that being said, Chop, I appreciate you for coming in and taking the time with us. Uh, stay humble, stay hungry, and always live your life to the fullest. Thanking everybody for, tune for tuning in today. And uh, that's about it. Kiki, you got any last words? <laughs> no, I don't have nothing. <laughs> All right, y'all. We appreciate y'all for tuning in. And we are out. Peace. Uh -huh. Yeah. Nah, nope. Bruh. Yo, where you at? Where you at? My homie Lou on the mic. The mother host need to stop. They ain't doing it right. If you ain't turned in the loop, what you doing with your life? Conversation so sharp, it ain't your usual night. We got athletes, entrepreneurs, even celebrities. Politicians discuss nationwide discrepancies. Hardcore tackling issues in our community. Spreading on knowledge, creating an opportunity. Tune in live with light skin Tune in live with light skin looks. Tune in live with light skin looks. Tune in live with light skin looks. Light skin looks. Light skin looks.